Let's start by looking at some of the basic sample mode controls. Now I've got an initialized patch here and I'm going to switch to sample mode and let's load in a sound source and I've got one that I've bookmarked in a little project that I set up called Formant Piano and we'll just close that. We're in the sound source browser and there it is. Now these are all the default settings. Let's just play it. I have a little sequence programmed up. I'll play a little bit of it. Now we have a couple of controls right on the front page here without having to go into the zoom that can really affect the sound of the sound source. The timber slider over here has two modes, crush mode and shift mode. And the slider, basically it varies the harmonic tonal quality of the sound source by altering some of the tonal characteristics from the original samples that are mapped out in the sound source. And in crush mode, it's a kind of polyphonic bit crushing and distortion and filtering that's applied to the sound source. When we move it to the left, we're bit crushing with a low pass filter. And when we move it to the right, we're bit crushing with a high pass filter. So I'll play that little sequence and move the slider and you'll hear how it's doing that kind of distortion and filtering. Now, when we're in timber shift mode, it creates harmonic changes by transposing the mappings of the sample in one direction and changing the pitch in the opposite. So all this is about stretching the samples and the mappings. So I'll do the same thing. I'll play this little region and I'll move the slider and you'll hear the subtle harmonic differences in the timber of the sound. Now we have a start slider and it determines that at what point in the sample it'll begin playing from when the oscillator is triggered. And the range of the slider varies depending on the number of samples that are used in the sound source. So again, let's listen to that. I'll trigger some single notes. So it's got a really aggressive attack. And we can also have a reverse button, which basically reverses the playback of the sound source for this layer. We're not hearing anything because it's got a long envelope when it's in reverse. And when we start it towards the end, we'll hear it kick in more. So it's basically reversing the envelope. Now, the good thing about these sliders is they can be modulated. So let me give you a little example. For example, I'll put this in crush mode. Let's put this near the beginning. And let's say I want to modulate this just to give you a little introduction of how this whole sort of synthesis engine works. I'm going to use an LFO, which is a waveform shape, and I'm going to modulate this parameter with it. So I'm going to select as a modulation source, for example, LFO1. I'm going to sync it to tempo. Now I'm jumping ahead a bit here just to give you a little sort of taste of what this does. And I'm going to use that LFO and the target that I want to modulate is the sample timber slider. And we can set the amount there that or the position that's going to start in. And let's listen. So what it's doing basically is automating moving this value around, even though we're not seeing the slider jump around. Here it is with no LFO moving the amount here. And now with it. So you can really create motion and movement in a sound source in this example, just by modulating these simple controls. So those are basic sample sound source controls and we'll continue with more in the next video.